Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. I know the lighting's off, but I kind of thought of something. I want to share this with you before we even get started on the video. My name's Tanya, and I'm glad you're here, and we're going to make something really good today. This is the third of a series of four videos on what to do with honey roll dough. So I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I will in just a minute, but I want to let you in on this kind of, kind of a hack before we get started. I want you to see that my flower bin right here is almost empty. Now I know I'd get right in the middle of this video and go, oh crud, I gotta open a bag of flour, empty it into my uh, big canister, and this will fit two five pound bags of flour if I need to put that in there at a time. And this time of year, it's around holiday season, I do a lot of bake, well, I always do a lot of baking, but sometimes more in the, in the holiday season around Christmas, Thanksgiving, than I do normally throughout the year. But I just use an incredible amount of flour. So this is getting low. I didn't want to stop in the middle of the video and have to refill this. So before this, I wanted to show you what I do. I try to empty out everything I can out of my flour bin before adding new because then the old otherwise just sits in the bottom of the canister and it just keeps getting older. So I try to clean as much of it out of there as I can. But I want to show you what I do to the bags of flour when I get them. Now, this is just a typical bag of flour that I picked up at my market. It has a pretty high protein content, so I like it. I'm satisfied with it for now. But when I come home from the market, the first thing I do is write a date on it when I purchased it. And then what I do is I take it into my pantry, and I have a food safe five-gallon bucket with a lid on it, and I have neem, dried neem leaves in the bottom of it. You can use bay leaves, I think. It's supposed to keep pests from hatching and keep them out or something. Anyway, mine don't have time to hatch. They'd have to be like super bugs to hatch in the short amount of time that they stay in that bucket. But I usually keep about anywhere from four to six five pound bags of flour in there. But I always rotate them. So I look for the one that's been in there the longest Put it on the top of the um, stack of sacks in there in the bucket with the lid on it and then i take it out and use it first so anyway all that being said it's like a supermarket you just rotate things so you don't always have the oldest one at the bottom so i want to get that out of the way before we get started so i'll turn the camera off and then we'll get started in just a second i'm looking forward to this okay here we go we're going to get started on our third video for things to do with our honey roll dough Today, we're gonna to make chocolate rolls. And I'm telling you, I have to hurry up and bake these and give them away quick, because if not, they're gonna be one miss, and I just gotta be honest with you. I cannot be around these things, because yeah, it's my kryptonite. So, let's get started. Now, a while ago, I had this honey container that was almost empty, so just eyeballing it and the spatial person that I am, I decided that it looked like about two tablespoons, and that's what we need in our honey bread, or honey roll dough. So I just flip the bowl upside down, let it drain in my bowl. So in here, I have two about two tablespoons of honey, and I've had one cup of milk in my saucepan heating up. We're gonna put this in there. We'll put our yeast in there to activate. That's about two and a half teaspoons of yeast. Sprinkle it over the top. And guess what? I'm not gonna wait for it to activate. I'm gonna start putting the ingredients in there. I think this will work. It's never failed me yet. No matter what I do to this dough, it just turns out beautifully. I don't have to wait to see if it activates. I know my yeast is good. I just used it yesterday, so it's not like, oh, my yeast suddenly went bad. No, it's not bad. It's still good. So we're gonna keep going with this. I also need a half a cup of olive oil. So I'll measure that out. And we'll put that in next. And again, this is the olive oil I use. and rub the excess in my hands because it's cold weather and I never pass up an opportunity to rub some butter or some oil into my hands if I accidentally get some on my hands. All right, I'm just gonna put that around the edge. I 
I better get my favorite spatula before I keep going too far. I hope that information about the filling your flour bin was helpful to you. If you're anything like me, you just use a lot of flour, but you don't want to let one bag stay in there for so long and then start, you know, hatching insects and stuff. Cause I mean, let's just face it. It's got the insect eggs in there. It's just a matter of, are they going to hatch because it's been in your pantry too long? Are they going to be in a warm area or something like that? So it'll happen if you're not careful. So this just kind of keeps your stock rotated and that way that you'll use the fresher one. Um, you'll use the older ones first and just keep rotating them. Okay, so to this, we're gonna add an egg. And I like to use a clear glass to break my egg in sometimes, just in case there's a question about any shell breaking in there. If it's an opaque dish, you're not gonna see it, but if it's a clear cup like this, you can see the shell that's in there. Dump it right in there. Now, I'm not going into great detail about this recipe because the first video had detail about the honey roll dough and the other ones past that are more about the ingredients and the different types of rolls. So this is a three and a half cups of all-purpose organic flour. And then we'll put our teaspoon and a half of salt on top of that. Put our dough book on. You know what after a while i'll have to get my big cookie sheet with my little skid proof bottom on it because this thing's going to travel all over the countertop but we'll just turn it on for five minutes this time and then we'll be back in just a bit okay timer just went off we're simply turning our mixer off. Now I will take this opportunity to put my mixer up on this baking sheet because I don't want it traveling into the floor because it will. Okay, we're gonna let this rest for about five minutes and then we'll come back and let it run for 40 minutes. So I'll turn the camera back on when we do that too. Okay, so our mixer has been off. The dough has been resting for about five minutes. So we're gonna turn the mixer back on now for 40 minutes. Don't turn it off, don't panic. Just turn it on for 40 minutes and let it do its job. It's better than doing it by hand, trust me. So if you have a mixer, bless you. I've always had a good mixer and I'm telling you what, if I didn't, I'd probably look like Popeye by now. But here we go, 40 minutes. Okay, it's been 40 minutes, but I gotta share with you what just happened. <laughs> So I turned the mixer on. I had it on this baking sheet with this skid proof. I gotta show you this thing. This skid proof stuff that's for a shelf liner. I mean, I probably, I couldn't scoop my hand on this easily if I wanted to. I thought I was good. Well, I take the doggies outside in the backyard to let them go to the bathroom and sniff around the fence and everything and just go out and generally go nuts. 10 minutes later, 10 minutes, I walked back in the door and I just, of course I talked to the dogs and I said, I better get back in here, make sure my mixer's okay. And I walked in and I'm not kidding, this mixer, still going, it was hanging like this. And of course it was vibrating a lot because my mixer vibrates a lot. I don't know what's wrong with my mixer. And it was vibrating and it was teetering on the edge of this countertop. Friends, that was just about the end of sh she's uh, at it again because I about had a heart attack. Oh my word, my heart is still beating fast. That was 30 minutes ago. I texted my sister, I took a pic, I took a selfie real quick with this camera up here and I sent, it, I sent her the picture and I said, this is what just happened. She hadn't responded yet because she's still, probably still in shock because the picture, I was just looking at her like, what is going on? So, okay, back to this recipe. We're gonna let this rest for an hour and then we're gonna shape out our cinnamon rolls. 
So stay tuned. <laughs> Woo! Okay, I'm really ready now. Been on the phone with the KitchenAid company about my mixer. That just has me baffled. So they don't have an answer for me just to cut to the chase there. Okay, we're gonna make our filling for our chocolate rolls right now. So in my metal bowl here, I've just had this on a real low burner. It's not hot enough to burn my hand, but it's still warm. So my butter's melted. I have six tablespoons of unsalted butter. And to that, we're gonna add two tablespoons or so, maybe three, two or three. Depending on how much you like chocolate. We'll go with close to three of cocoa powder. This is unsweetened cocoa powder. Don't get in a hurry to mix anything else in. This is called blooming. And this is when the oils from the butter and the cocoa come together. And it turns it to a, a kind of a liquid form. But that's called blooming your cocoa. So in all fairness, I did talk to a really sweet lady named Angela at KitchenAid. She was so very kind. I mean, we started talking about kids and travel and dogs and all kinds of stuff. She was just very pleasant to talk to. But by the end of the conversation, she said I made her day. So that was worth the phone call right there. Never mind about the mixer. Maybe I'll just use it too much, who knows. But it's been a really good mixer. So if you see me with a different color mixer soon, it means I got a new one. All right, so when it gets to the consistency where you can no longer see lumpy things in your cocoa, that means it's bloomed. Sorry, I can't turn, here, I'll turn this this way. How about I do this? Of course, I'm blocking the light now. See how smooth that is? And it almost gets to where it looks like it's gonna start thickening up, but it won't. It's just that it has bloomed. All right, now to this, we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla. I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon in here. And this is my, just my homemade vanilla extract with vanilla beans and some organic vodka made with sugar cane, which is really cool. And it has been aging for probably two years now. So it just keeps getting better. To this, we're gonna add about a fourth of a teaspoon, not quite a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So just shy of a fourth of a teaspoon. Again, the salt is going to balance out the sweetness in it because we're gonna add some sugar to it in a bit, but not before we add some honey because we wanna keep that in a very smooth consistency. I would say let's put about tablespoon of honey in there. This is slow coming out. Okay, close to a tablespoon. And then we're gonna do about a half cup of sugar. Maybe just a little bit more than a half cup. So this has about five eighths of a cup. And again, this is that Zulka unbleached sugar. It's real sugar cane, non-GMO. So if you're gonna use sugar, just use something better than white grocery store sugar that may or may not be sugar cane, might be beet sugar, might be GMO. If it doesn't say, it probably is. So just being safe. Okay, we're gonna turn this into a paste here. this cools off a bit it'll thicken up just a tad but not so much that we can't spread it for sure so here's what it looks like 
See that? It smells so good. I could lick this spatula, but I'm not going to because because y'all are watching me. That's the only reason I'm not gonna lick it. All right, set this aside. And then we'll come back in just a bit. We have about 15 more minutes and our dough will be ready to get out of the bowl and roll it out and make some rolls in. So we'll be right back. Okay, our buzzer is just about to go off on our oven, which means our bread has been, our dough has been rising for an hour. So I'm gonna turn that off. And so what I failed to say, because I was still all freaked out about the mixer almost going off the countertop, is when I let it rise, I cover it in a shower cap. If you watch many of my videos, you know about the famous shower caps. So we'll take that off now. And we're gonna get our dough out onto our counter. Again, we don't need flour on this. That would just add more flour to the dough and we don't need more flour and then because it would then require time to sit and absorb it or else it'd make it a little tough. So no more flour added to it. I'm gonna put it out on the counter just like it is and it is beautiful. We're gonna roll this out again, kind of like we said yesterday. Well, when we were making our cinnamon rolls, that was yesterday for me. It may have been two days ago for you. We're gonna just roll this out into a rectangle. It's not a wrong size, no matter what size you do it. If you do it super long and narrow, or if you do it in a big square, but I just usually try to get mine. I usually eyeball it about the same size every time. It comes out to be about. 12 inches by 16 inches, 16 inches being wide, 12 inches being tall or the height of it. <laughs> Just try to get it as straight on the sides as you can. <laughs> These are also gonna go to someone else. In other words, they're not gonna stay in my house cause I'll eat them all. Um, so these are a Christmas gift for some friends of ours, some very, very good friends of ours. And I'm going to put them in an aluminum pan like I did the cinnamon rolls. We're going to do the parchment paper trick where we wad it up and put the parchment in there because I don't want food touching the aluminum. Whether I eat it or I feed it to somebody else, I still feel like it's my responsibility to make better choices. So put it next to the aluminum. Now I set this back over there on the burner, but you can see this has gotten to where it's almost like, um, not quite like Play-Doh, it's not that stiff, but it certainly isn't as runny as what it was while ago, partially because maybe the sugar has absorbed and the cocoa has absorbed some of the butter oils in there. All right, so we're gonna do just like we did the cinnamon rolls. Slap it on there and spread it out. This just smells so unbelievably good. And if you're not a fan of chocolate, find another flavor that you love just this much and do the same thing with it, but I'm telling you. I could eat the whole can of these. Now, when I was a kid, my grandmother, my Nana, and my mother always made what was called a chocolate roll. Now, they didn't cut it in different sections, so it was just, it looked like a big slug on a pan, and because our pan wasn't that big, they kind of had it going in a C shape or, you know, just kind of a round shape. But my granddad, being the scalawag that he was, everybody loved Granddad, but he would always offer me, my sister, whoever was at the table, the first piece of chocolate roll, and we just thought, 
Granddad loves us so much. He's given us the first piece. That's great. And if it was hot, ugh, we could not wait to get to hurry up and eat your supper so you can get a piece of that chocolate roll. Well, again, it was just in one big piece, like a big C shape. But what we realized later on was he was offering the first piece to us because that was the end. And there wasn't as much chocolate in the end of it. And the center of it was where all the goods were. That's where all the chocolate and all the gooey dough was in the center that wasn't quite as browned and crisp as the end of it. And that's the part that he wanted. So he wasn't offering it to us because he loved us. He was offering it to us because his part was in the center. He wanted that middle piece. And if Nana was ever looking the other direction, he was known to cut that center piece out of it and take that as his piece first. And she would get so upset. <laughs> Not really upset, but you know, just telling how juvenile it was. But it was just funny because it's granddad. If it were anybody else, I'd go, can you believe? Man, that's really cruel. That's really mean. What a horrible person. But it was granddad. So, hey, whatever goes with granddad. Because we did love us some granddad. Okay, again, it doesn't necessarily, uh, it, it's not as important to get the chocolate toward the top and the bottom as it is to get it all the way to the sides. Because that is going to be, a chocolate roll there at the end too and you want it to have as much chocolate as you do in all the other ones so make sure you get it all the way to the end on the edge this is pretty fun to play with has just enough butter to it to where it comes off the spatula pretty easily. All right, we're gonna roll this up. Let me move this over here. Roll this up and then we're gonna cut these with our dental floss. And I did say dental floss. So just like we did the cinnamon rolls in the last video, we're gonna do these just like that. So block it at the end with your hand, make it flat. We'll let that sit there just a moment and I'll get my parchment. And open it up and smooth it out. Try not to tear it. ready to go and here's my piece of dental floss ready to go so we're going to take our dental floss wrap it around your fingers oh we're going to mark it first so halfway halfway between those and then each one of those sections put two marks on that which divides it into three rolls we now have it divided into 12 chocolate rolls so we'll slide this under Pull it up, cross it over. You're not gonna tie it, you just cross it over. Cross it over, start from the other end, bring it up on that dividing mark, and we're gonna slice all of them like that. This just slices them beautifully. Nothing falls out, it's not flattened, just stays nice and round.
Perfect. Put that back there. Let's make sure we get a good view of this. Let me turn this camera down. Hopefully you can see that. Let me turn this one down too. Okay, that's better. Remember, we'll take our two end pieces. This is the rounded end. You're gonna put the flat end toward the top. Those will be our center pieces. You'll have four lines of three. So just start lining them up in there. And if I, forgot to, if I forgot to say it a while ago, be sure your seam of your roll is down on the counter so it doesn't start coming unrolled. Okay, hopefully you can see that well. Hopefully you can see it. I didn't leave, if I didn't live here, I'd have to leave this house because this is going to smell way too good after a while when they're baking. Just so, so good. All right, I'm going to place these in the oven and turn the light on, and that way it's going to keep them warm while they're rising. We're going to let these rise for about an hour, and then we'll come back. We'll put them in the oven and bake them off after that, so we'll be right back. Okay, our rolls have not come out of the oven yet, so they're not done. They lack about seven minutes, but I want to go ahead and get the glaze done for these. Now, normally, when I was a kid, we never had glaze on these, but if we did, that'd have been really dangerous. So maybe they knew more than what I give them credit for. Um, but we're gonna do a cream cheese glaze, just like we put on the cinnamon rolls pretty much yesterday. So we start out with about two ounces of cream cheese, and I've had this on a very, very low heat burner and got it softened up. We're gonna put about half a cup of powdered sugar in there, but first of all, I wanna get a little bit of salt in it. I like to get that salt mixed in because I don't wanna get just a blob of salt in one section of it. I'd rather have it all mixed in really good before I add anything else to it. Add about a half teaspoon of vanilla. This is my homemade vanilla again. Vanilla will help in dissolving that salt for us just a bit. And we won't put this on as soon as they come out of the oven because they're just too hot and it'll dissolve into it and you won't even look like you have any glaze on there. So we'll let them cool off just maybe, oh, 20 or 30 minutes. It's kind of cool in the house today, so we'll let them cool off for about 20 or 30 minutes and then put the glaze on after that. Okay, here is our powdered sugar that we use. Again, eyeballing this, but I'm saying about a half a cup. And then we'll add our liquid to it. This is just heavy whipping cream, but only add about a teaspoon at a time. Oh, now I have a timer going off. For some reason, my timer decided to go off. And I had to turn that off. I just added about a teaspoon of heavy cream to that. You can always add more later, but you can't take it out. So just add a teeny tiny bit at a time. All right, put this back in the fridge. doesn't 
look like a lot of glaze, but really and truly it doesn't take a lot. You're just adding a little bit of that cream cheese flavor to the top of it, which is phenomenal. But the glaze is certainly not the star of the show in this act. Okay, so that's what our glaze looks like. Nice and smooth. We'll set that aside and we'll get ready for our rolls to come out in about three minutes. Okay, our timer just went off. We're gonna get our rolls out of the oven. Oh my goodness. Mm. Okay, I didn't turn the oven off because I'm fixing to bake something else after we get these taken care of and out of the oven and once we get them frosted too. Okay, I wanna show this to you. We're gonna let these sit for just a bit, and then we're gonna frost them, and then I'll come back and show you the final product. All right, let's put our frosting on these, or our glaze. Just gonna kinda of blob it on a few of them. Guys, have y'all ever made something and given it to a friend and thought, Ooh, I hope they ask me if I want some of that. This is one of those things. If I gave this to my friend Tammy and she said, oh, let's cut you a piece and let you have some. Okay. Yep. I'd stand right there and eat it in front of her. No shame. These are that good. Normally I have manners. I, I probably wouldn't have manners. I just go, mm hmm thank you kindly, and eat it really fast. I don't even know that this cream cheese frosting can make it any better. They're just so good. And I will kind of give you a clue as to what the inside tastes like because it still has that chewy texture because of the honey and it's not just grainy like salt and, or like, um, sorry, sugar and cocoa. It kind of has the texture of a Tootsie Roll. I remember what Tootsie Rolls taste like, unless they've changed in the last 20 years or so. That's probably been about length of time since it's been since I've had one. But that tastes like a Tootsie Roll, sort of. Okay, this one doesn't have any on it. Whoops. I'm making a bigger mess than I really should. parchment's nice because even if the paper touches the chocolate part, you just peel the chocolate right off of it. That parchment's fabulous stuff. Okay, so if I call my friend and she's home this afternoon, I'm not sure what she has going but I may have to take these over to her house. I just can't leave these in my house. I don't really trust myself with them. And I don't really think she'd buy it if I said, you know what, it just makes 11 and I, I don't really know, but the, the recipe just always makes 11. So there's just 11 in there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she knows that's not the truth. Okay, all right. This is our pan of chocolate rolls. Give you a close up with that camera and then I'll let you see them right there. Guys, I'm telling you, if you really, really love somebody and wanna try something new, make something that you've never made before, try this and give it to them. It's so good, especially if they love chocolate. They're absolutely gonna adore you and they're gonna love these too. So thanks for joining us. We look forward to sharing something again with you real soon. Thanks, bye.